What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys at home are having a fantastic day. Before we jump into today's video, guys, a huge shout out to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today's video. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top tier goods from under the radar brands. The best part is it's free to join. Every single month they introduce their members to cool new products. Every box has around $70 of value but only costs $45. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the US. You only pay for what you want. You'll get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside of it to decide if you would like to one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box on offer, or three, skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. Right here, I've got a giant box of bespoke post boxes. Let's take a look. Bam, this box right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the field box. As you can see right here, we are gonna go ahead and take a look at it. This tells you a little bit about your box. Go ahead and open the packaging. And wah bam, look at this. We've got an open now saw knife. It also comes with this guy, a slingshot with eco ammo, which are biodegradable balls. And we've got garden balm, which is great for moisturizing your hands. That's what's inside the field box. Let's check out the rest. Whoa, look at this guy. This comes in in a literal ammo crate. This is crazy. This whole thing is super sick. Besides what's in it, the ammo crate in and of itself is badass. Right here, you got some survival tips, survival 101 tips. You've got an entire book about surviving the great outdoors. Look how thick that sucker is. I bet this thing's got all sorts of goodies, gadgets, and gizmos. Honestly, I need to get better at surviving. I make these survival videos, and to be honest, they, I gotta step up my game. I gotta start reading some literature here and, uh, and get better at surviving in the great outdoors. You've also got Got this bracelet, which is made out of paracord, which you can take apart and use for a million different things. Look what we got here. Shoo! We got a legitimate knife. Oh my, look at that knife, baby. It even comes with a custom sheath. This thing is badass. Carry this sucker in the woods. You can gut your deer with it, skin your deer, you name it. This knife can do it. They've even got a commando wire saw. They've even got a box called the Slash, which features a Japanese knotted tool with a sheath. But if you guys want to get your own Bespoke Post box, you can click the link down in the description down below and get 20% off your first box by using promo code FLAIR20. Or go to bspk.me slash FLAIR20. Huge shout out to Bespoke Post for sponsoring today. Today's videos, brands like them that I partner with that allow me to do I do every single day, just make videos for you guys at home to enjoy. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of today's video. Shoo! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a, another video we are starting the day off. Well, we've got some not terrible news. Nothing's dead yet. We just have an update here. If anything would be dead, I wish it was that little feathered. I can't say that. Alright, anyways, uh yeah, Pedro, you just need to go somewhere. Go ahead. Anyways, as you can tell, Ralph is over on his side by himself because he is being a naughty boy. We came down here. It's been a few days, but I hadn't really filmed the animals much over the last few days. Big boy, you're by yourself. You're in isolation. It's like you're in jail, and I know you're not happy about it. No, llama, no, no. Look at her. She is so mad. Okay, so here's what happened. Look at Steve. He's trying to protect llama right now. Get away from the fence. You, yeah, you go ahead and get, you can go ahead and throw him some grain. Oh, look, they're all just sitting here waiting like, are y'all going to put the camera down and feed us or what? So here's what happened. Braden Price is down here, and he's like, I want to go see your camel and animals. I'm like, Oh yeah, sounds good. We come down here, and this sucker right here, he was on top of llama, not in a good way. He thought it was a good way, she did not. He crushed her completely. He had his hoof down, her back looked like it was tweaked, her head was on the ground, she couldn't move. Steve was spitting cud in Ralph's face, biting Ralph, trying to defend llama. And Ralph wasn't being mean to Steve necessarily, but he was beating up llama. I mean, he's trying to breed. So like, I mean, he hurt her. From the time that we saw him, and he he was not hurting her to the time that we found him and she was like hurt was like 15 minutes meaning like if i was just gone for the day there's a good chance llama would be dead so we ended up jumping in there and i had to sit there and kind of shoo him off and he's kicking and flailing i mean it was a bad deal and we ended up giving him some grain got him scared out or you know pushed out to the other side here we got him over on this side 
and uh, got him away. We put like, I think Rick and Dale with him, you know, just so he had somebody. I think maybe Carlos is over here too. Got him by himself. Llama was just KO'd. I mean, literally not existent, not moving. She she barely could blink. Um, I was sitting down there and petting her and poor Steve. I felt so bad for my boy, Steve. Steve was sitting there like trying to fight me. It was a sad situation. Long story short, this sucker just got to the point in his life where he's ready to rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's turning three. At least that's what our guess is. He's turning three this year, which is the age when he's ready to rock and roll. And Llama, I guess, he sees Llama as the closest thing to a mate as we have over here. So he tried doing the deed with Llama, and Llama was not about the camel life. He ended up hurting her and attacking her. So you're in isolation. He's been by himself now for a few days. We ended up taking Llama into the barn over here, and I can kind of show you guys. That's our setup. You can see we put the gate there. There's some like barbed wire, chicken wire stuff. So we put Llama and Steve in that barn and locked them in there. Gave them their own food, their own water for two days. And also I go down there two days later. I mean, I checked them you know, a couple times today, but like two days later, she's up and walking around and she's totally fine. We actually ended up calling the vet. I forgot to tell you that. She's laying there. I called the vet and I said, hey, you need to come check her out. And I would also bring whatever vets need to bring to put animals down. And I was, I was sad to be honest with you. I was already put Llama down. I didn't think she was going to recover. And the vet got here and she kind of started to perk up just a little bit more. And she's like, you know what? Just give her some time. Got her in the barn, gave her food and water and all that. And all of a sudden, within two days, Llama's back up better than ever. Anyways, an absolute just show out here. So Ralph's by himself in solitary confinement and he's not happy about it, but he's got a, his own bale of hay. You can't see it's behind the barn. We put it behind the barn so he can't roll it down the hill because he did that one time. You're not as nice as you used to be. I've been trying to get him castrated, right? Bye bye. The old Jerry treatment. I guess if you do that, then he like calms down and like relaxes a little bit and won't just start attacking everything. Well, I've been talking to my vet for the last year. My vet's like, it's a cam. I, I've never done that. So they had been doing research and you know, I just, I procrastinated. They procrastinated to the point where like basically once Llama got attacked, I was like, all right guys, you need to look it up because we got to get this done. They looked it up. They were actually scheduled today to come chop his nuts off and then we can release him back. They ended up calling somebody that I guess handles camels. I don't know if it's for the zoo or what. And they said, you can't castrate camels from November to March because that's rut for a camel. And I guess if you cut him during rut, there's a chance for bleed out and it's just super dangerous. The animal handler that talked to that literally told him to tell me not to go in the pen with Ralph because when a camel is three to five years old and they start rutting, they literally just try killing everything. I feel like Joe Exotic right now where you're like, no, he's nice. And then you're dead. Everyone's like, get rid of him. Everyone, like, everyone I talk She's like, dude, just tell him I can't. He's my baby. I love that. Well, he's not. I actually have a baby. And I love a lot more than Ralph. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I like Ralph a lot. He's he's my buddy. He's just he's not himself. I should have just got him a Snickers. You're not you when you're horny. Let's just. Can I say that? Yeah, I just yes. said it. That's basically what's going on. And he's just so occupied with Chase and Tail that he just fights everybody. So when we put him in here by himself initially, we had Dale and Rick and Carlos. You know, a bunch of males, whatever, and they all got along fine. And uh, we come back down like 10 minutes later. Rick had jumped the fence. He jumped. The, he's out here. Never, he's never done that. So he's basically scared Rick so much that Rick jumped the fence. Basically, we got Killer Camel. We thought we had Killer Carol. We thought Carol took down Quattro and Jerry, but it maybe, maybe it was the Killer Camel. I don't know. Anyways, I had to give you guys an update. We had to feed these guys, check on them. I guess we have to keep him like that until March. I feel so bad. I really do. Like, I love Ralph so much. I feel bad that he has to live by himself. So then I started thinking, Banjo, let's get Ralph a friend. Something that, like, somewhere, someone that can hold their own. Well, then I started talking to some other people and they said, well, you're pretty much much only option is to get a camel and if you get a male he's gonna breed it and you don't want baby camels or two if you get a male they're gonna fight or you could get a horse and it's the same thing female he's gonna try to breed it he don't care what it is he's trying to get some of that which is not good and you're gonna end up with animals fighting or you get two males and they're in heat they're gonna fight regardless so basically the safest option unfortunately for this guy and unfortunate for the other I just realized that I might have to buy another barn and we might have to build something because now I just realized all of those animals have one barn to live in that's the bigger barn barn at least. It's, that's a bigger barn than that one. But I just realized all the animals are going to have to fit in one barn instead of the two because he has to occupy that entire barn. So options could be drag that barn over there and just build a one stall hut for big boy Ralph. Beefcake something for Ralphie to stay in. Anyways, give me some ideas for big boy Ralph. We pretty much went through the whole thing and figured if we get something that's a male that's big enough to beat him up, then they're just going to fight. You get a female, he's going to try to mount it. You know, our fencing isn't like the most well done fencing because it was Beefcake Construction LLC. He, if he wanted to, could plow right through this fence, but we're just hoping he don't get to that point. So is there a way to entertain a camel without getting him another animal? Like, can we give him like a ball or something, like a rattle? I don't know, I'm trying to think of what I do for my, my child. Do you like pacifiers? Right, anyways, uh, we gotta keep entertained. So drop your comments down in the comment section below, but today's video is exciting. We still have a couple hours left of sunlight. Felix, you guys have seen him in some previous videos. He's an old man that I grew up basically fishing with with my dad. He's like the trout slayer. And he's gonna bring his buddy Craig, who's also the trout slayer. And we are gonna do some trout 
trout fishing in the backyard pond. That is the plan. It's backyard pond trout fishing. He's bringing like salmon eggs, floating salmon eggs, and bringing the whole nine. Trout fishing is the plan, and then catch can cook them. We're not sure how we're going to cook them, but there's your animal update. Just the typical, you know, craziness going on, and uh, Felix should be here in just a couple minutes. So we'll see you guys down at the cabin pond. Shoo! Well, we made it down to the cabin pond, and we've got two special guests. What, what's your name? Craig. Craig, and you are the fly fishing guy. I see yeah. you got the fly fishing rod. Yep. You're ready to go. And then we've got this guy. Felix. Be <laughs> Felix, he's here. You all know me. Yeah, oh yeah, we all, we're all well aware. If you don't know who he is, Felix taught me everything I know, is yeah. if you ask him, right? I didn't teach him how to make money, though. Oh, no, really, really? <laughs> called in, basically, the trout guys to teach me how to catch yeah. trout and maybe teach you guys how to catch trout so you guys know we stocked a ton of trout in this pond we have yet to fish for them we haven't seen them yet i did bring the mondos in case they are shallow but i'm not sure so how this pond lays out is there's just a big bowl kind of in the middle we have a couple little pockets and stuff and they could be back there there's a chance but my guess if i was a trout they're going to be down in this little area so like i said we are here to do a catch clean cook on some trout it's a beautiful day i, I can't believe the weather it's like 50 degrees like i don't need the way to be wearing this here right now it's not really that cold but water is a little dingy i'm not gonna lie water is a little dingy you guys can kind of see it it's a little slime there, a little green tin action, but I was gonna say this log's new. So that's sick. These beavers are still absolutely just raising hell here. I, I don't see any super fresh ones. The last ones we saw was that big like cedar pine tree right there. That was the last one they took out, but brought the trout squad to help us catch some trout because trout can be kind of finicky. They can be a little, I wouldn't say they're hard, they're difficult to catch. I mean, the reality is we, we stocked a hundred like haggers in here. They should be easy, but if I came out here and I fished and I didn't catch any, then I would be like, maybe it's because I suck. I'm telling you right now, if these guys over here do not catch any, we messed something up somehow or the fish are way back there and we're gonna have to go get a boat it should be automatic and we're gonna do a catch clean cook we got the cabin here off grid cabin as you guys know um, we can go in there and chef it up we've got a bunch of cooking utensils in there and whatnot so all we got to do is catch some trout for lunch or dinner and then take them in there get them all cleaned up chefed up and get some trout in our mouth so with that being said how many poles are you rocking felix well i'm gonna put out one for you then i'm gonna fix your rod oh okay so you can fish yeah you can use the flag so is it do you is it like catfishing where you stick it on the ground or do i hold it it don't matter like i didn't know if you could like can we like line the bank you know i'm kind of lazy no? i just stick it in the rod and, and just watch it goes up and then i go get it oh yeah see i i like that idea i'm my saying. nice chair yeah oh yeah we didn't bring chairs i brought mine you brought a chair well yeah oh i got a recliner in the cabin i don't i only got brought your chair. truck up and just sit in the truck <laughs> yeah you can literally just sit in your truck that is true all right so we're gonna go we'll follow felix he'll probably be in here somewhere. right in here that's kind of what I thought. I mean, there's not a hundred of them. One of them's got to be in the big bowl here. Kind of watch and see if you can see them surfacing. Oh, okay. Like and they'll that's sit where there you and go. Now, if they're surfacing way over there, we're yeah, we're in trouble. You can't really, we can't really get over there all that well. Oh, we got the the fly rods in action now. She, that's gonna be crazy to get one on the fly rod. These fish, they're large. They are, they're very, very large trout. Like a lot bigger than what you get when you go to like the state lakes that they stock them and whatnot. Oh, did I just? Oh, maybe not. Thought I might have just saw a V towards you. Maybe not. I'm not too sure. Okay, what's the rig looking like? This is just a little tiny weight. Okay, with a stop, I just use a snap, and then this is four pound test. And then this is a number eight gold Aberdeen. Aberdeen, that's the style of hook? Right. Like an octopus Aberdeen, right? Like that's, right. okay, got it. It's a number six. Okay, and that's important. Yes, because you have to use two eggs to make it float. If you had an eight, then you only need one. Eight. Oh, so so a six is, that is, is heavier different. than an eight. So yep. you need two salmon eggs, and what you're saying. that's the secret of the system. That's the secret. You're giving all your secrets out. I know. All the lakes are gonna get cleaned out here in a minute. With, <laughs> you guys are getting tips from Felix. So for those of you guys that know, a six is a larger hook than an eight, meaning it's got more metal, which means it's heavier, which means it won't float with one egg so you got to put two because these are floating salmon eggs so they have to float they have to float. if they don't float you're wasting you're time wasting your money the only bad thing about this whole system these trout like to swallow it right away well we're eating them anyway as long as i get them up on shore life will be good watch what happens when it hits the bottom oh yeah you, they just sit there and float off the top which is good because there's a lot of weeds on the bottom right. so they'll sit right above those weeds no and then the trout the trout come up and get it and that's it that's why because if you throw something else that goes down them weeds they can't see that yeah and it just gets all gunky and whatnot so all right first line Oh, that's, that's definitely catching a fish, 1,000%. Curious how long it's gonna take. Like, it should be automatic. They were grain, I don't know, feed grain train. feed, feed yeah, train. Yeah. And I haven't gotten, oh, oh you oh, just, oh, 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 snap, oh. no way. No way. Dude, I hope it's this fire. I hope it is. Oh. Oh. Oh! Let's go! Oh, it's, oh look at them all swimming. Look at 
all swimming. You can see you all see the ripples. It? Oh, you got the mondo. Dude, look. I can't see it. Oh, let's no, that's go. A, that's a bat. That's a wait, bat. That's wait. A bat. No, no, dude. No, they're trout. Yeah, they're trout. trout. I thought it was so they're, big. They're, they're big trout. Look at that. Oh, that, that took a little long. But. Is that a little? <laughs> <laughs> a little. <laughs> it looks like a little, like a salmon. Look how big that sucker is. Oh sheesh. I would say his system works. I mean, sheesh. That is just absolutely incredible. Look at that sucker. Those are giant. Look, oh, easy there, buddy. Look how big that sucker is right there. That's huge. <laughs> That's the biggest one I ever caught. Really? Settle Isn't that crazy how big he is? That is insane. You swallow like you said? Yeah, oh, do you? Need the pliers? Easy. Oh, oh now broke. I did it. You break it? Yeah, he broke it. Well, I can get you, I'll get your hook back. I'm going in for two. surgery now. All right, I'll get this hook at him for you. That's the hook I'll use for your line. Right there. You made that look huh? way too easy. I told you, Fremont, I caught seven in seven minutes. Seven in seven? That's Public Lake, by the way, he's talking about. Yeah. Seven and seven. I brought the Trout Lord. Look how big this sucker is. I know you're not supposed to like lip trot. I feel like I'm like a ba I'm like that bass fisherman that's never done it before. That's like, mom, look at the trout I caught. Oh, rip. Come here, buddy. Here, let's get you cleaned up so everyone can see you. Dude, they are like the slimiest little suckers ever. That is just crazy. Honestly, that's like an <laughs> average size one for the pond. Like what we stocked, that's not. Bigger than that. Yeah, there's oh. bigger ones than that. Well, you saw Felix. His he's system worked. He's dialed, bro. <laughs> but when he set the hook, the water erupted. You could tell they were all together and like they all got fired up so where there's one there should be more stay tuned i knew the system works <laughs> well, it last long. But was that the biggest rainbow you've ever caught yeah and Here, how you long, you, how long you, is there a fish yeah yeah really yeah. oh my gosh we're hooked up already oh yeah another good one. Oh, look at him swim down there it's crazy Dude, I feel like we're like in Montana or something. This is like not normal. Dude, we are gonna be eating good today. I'll tell you what. I'd say your system's pretty decent, yeah. I didn't get to put my flag on. No I'm flag. mad now. <laughs> look at that guy. Dude, these are giants, dude. Oh, wow, this is crazy. I cannot believe how dialed these things are. I was so nervous they wouldn't be biting, and they definitely are. Oh, I bent that hook up. All right, in the bucket he goes. Sheesh! That's too baby. Like, look how thin this hook we're using is. Like, but I've never used such light line. That's why I called them. I literally don't even have gear like this, even for bluegills. Felix, I might need a new hook. Take oh God. Oh, did you just break it in half? Yeah. <laughs> we kind of messed up by not bringing the old papaw chairs. Yeah, I know. Well, it's, you don't even have time to sit. I'm like, True. God, by the time you get your line out there, you're just, you're reeling in the mint. For some of you guys are like, Larry, you just buy all your fish. It's not really fishing. Listen, the main reason why I did this, besides just to get videos for you guys, is I've got a bunch of nieces and nephews that love fishing, and I want to take them ice fishing. Because think about it. They're like, you know, yay tall, five-year-olds with ice rods. Before, they're like waving this sucker around, you know, but like give them a little ice rod and they can catch a big fish. So yeah. main reason why I bought it is I got some little nieces and nephews. My daughter's not old enough to probably hold a rod. We'll try that. Factor cap. We'll figure that out. But what you thinking now? Let's catch one with this. Catch one yeah, with a spoon? It. That's his secret lure. Secret lure? Who made that? I don't know. No, the, the hook cover. Yeah, I made the hook Yeah, cover. he made it. Yeah, of course you did. He made it before hook covers were a thing. Look at this. Innovation, dude. Honestly, like if the trout are that aggressive, using an artificial would probably be like more effective. Honestly, and it more Honestly, fun. might be fun. able to catch them cleaner too so you don't kill Ooh. them all. Because if we kill 30, we're going to have to eat 30 today. I, how much do you like trout? I like them, but... How do you cook them? Cut them. Yeah. Stuff them with some like lemons, herbs. Okay. Wrap them in foil, put them on the, the grill or the smoker. Because that's how I cook them too. Felix, do you like eating trout? No. He said never no. Mind. <laughs> okay, okay, never mind. All right, how do you do this? Felix, how do I work this? Throw it out and reel it in real slow, he says. This is so foreign to me. Like, I fish all my life. Not a big trout guy, though. Oh, that might have been a branch. I couldn't quite tell. Comment down below. You guys big trout guys. How do you like cooking them? I think, because we cooked them one time, and it's all right. It's just like, I mean, does this sound dumb when I say it tastes like fish? I've been kind of brainstorming, like, how could I make it taste less fishy? But every recipe you have is like, oh, slice up lemons and put it in there with some lemon pepper. It's like, yeah, so it tastes like lemon pepper fish. I'm trying to find something that's more innovative. I, the thing is, we have so many trout here. We got to find a better way. Like, the other way I thought of how to do it is make sushi. Because I feel like the fish they use for sushis, it's not cooked in, like, a really flavorful way. They just put it on top or put it in, like, a little California roll. And, like, it's got so many other flavors that that could mask it. So maybe trout sushi. I'm you ever thinking. had like, uh, you ever seen like the salmon dip that you eat with like crackers? Oh yeah. We oh. could do trout. Dip. Oh, no, you I might be onto something. That. We gotta get away from Basically like just cooking that. the fish because yeah. making like a dip, like chips and dip, uh -huh. a salmon dip, I think, maybe not today. Again, we probably don't have, well, we might today. We'll just kind of see how many we catch and what we want to do with them. But that is a really good idea. If you I made it to. into a dip, put it on some crackers. We have two plus three. We have 97 more in here, so. <laughs> 
Yeah, we better find a good recipe. Felix, I'm not sure they're big spoon guys. Fe Felix's illegal. method is just overpowered. Yeah, it really should be illegal in all f the lower 48. Too I mean, it was like four seconds. I think I need to go get back to Felix's method here and catch another fish. Stay tuned. I'll get out that little steel she had and really show you how to catch it. I, I mean, if you think you can catch one on this, I'd like to see it. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to rig you back up so you can get them stirred up. Okay. <laughs> Hog them fired up. Have you ever heard that trout can't digest corn? No, and then why do they eat it? Well. <laughs> I guess it's illegal in, in a lot of states. I guess like, you know, in like Montana or wherever like trout are like native, it's illegal to use corn because they can't digest it. Because I guess in the video I was like, yeah, if we really want to catch them, we just throw corn out. Everyone's like, oh, and like freaked corn. out. And I was like, what? What's the problem? I use corn all the time. So I guess it's illegal. Maybe it is in this state too. I guess I'll find out when this video goes up. Every but. So you're getting getting me rigged back up then. So we're ready to go. It's a, honestly a pretty simple system you got, but what? it's obviously proven. Do you ever show up to the state lakes and like watch all the kids in the bank not catch anything and you just wax them? <laughs> Is, yes. it, is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's usually. I well, could. Last, I could just imagine like these kids are like, "Hey man, what do you use?" And you're like, "Don't worry about it." And you're just like wailing uh, on them. I helped the little buggers out. There's this guy. He walked by me. And I already caught seven. Okay. And he said, "He's. I've been here for an hour and a half. I haven't caught a fish." So I says, "You want some?" <laughs> Here you go. You can take the fish that I caught that you were trying to catch, but you're too bad to catch or you can take my fish. I thought, I was surprised you didn't bring the MEPS. Remember when you used to catch all the fish with that thing? You'd you know, outfish well, me you know, bass fishing with a MEPS. Yeah, I caught a ton of fish the other day with a MEPS. Yeah? It was like a little white, white MEPS. No, they were only two pound crappie. Oh, only two pound only crappie, two huh? Pound. Tighten it up and see if yeah, you can feel yeah. them. See if you can feel them. Oh! oh. Yeah, you we'll did. get re-rigged. You robbed me. Robbed Thief. me. Bunch of thieves out here, folks. So these are, this is what we're using, some salmon eggs, red floating salmon eggs, in case you guys are big trout guys. It's like, to me, it's like, and I wouldn't say it's all new. Like I grew up doing this, but I'd go with guys like Felix and he would just do it, not for me, but you know, like I've never had to understand what's going on. He would just hand me the ride and I'd go catch fish, but it's obviously a super proven method. So I wanted to share it with you guys. If you guys are big trout guys, then there you go. So that's it right there. That's what we're dealing with folks. Go ahead and chuck it out there and see what happens. There's some bass in here, yeah. What all do we have in here? Crappie, catfish, big bluegills. You should see the size of bluegills in here are massive, big as a trout. Oh, oh, oh he you got him! He did On the it. spoon! On the spoon! I saw it like hit it too. Oh, he got off. Oh, he come off? Yeah. No! I made two casts. <laughs> maybe you can catch with the spoon. Well, I, I let it go down a little further, I think. Maybe, yeah, I think they're maybe a little deep. Line's kind of way over there. It's like it's hooked on a branch or something. Yeah, there, I think there's a branch. I'm dragging on, I'm dragging on the bottom now. I'm gonna try it over there. Uh oh! Uh oh! Oh, he's going. Oh! Oh, he's, oh, he's got it! He's got it! Oh! Oh, oh he came up again! Oh. oh my gosh! He just ripped it twice. Yep. Oh no! Yeah, you're like, oh, he's going, he's going. Yeah, he had a wait. Well, and what, what were you using there? Oh, this is wax worms on a Oh, ice, well, ice fishing. It's literally an ice fishing rig. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that. Open water. Hey, I mean, I guess, yeah, it does it does the same thing. Yeah. All right, well, we're getting the action going. We, hopefully <laughs> one of us can land a fish here. Oh, that's it. Well, we got two in the box. So far, we're doing pretty good. Ooh, what you got going on here? Yes, sir. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's go. We got number three hooked up. Logs. Okay, we got a log. We got to divert. Whew. Come on, buddy. There we go. Easy. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sliding. I'm sliding. Look at this guy. <laughs> Come here, Junior. He's not bad. That's just a little guy. Sheesh. Hey, we might have to eat him. He's uh, He swallowed that hook pretty darn good. Open wide, my guy. There we go. Boom, another one. What's going on? You're giving up. Oh, I'm, no, no, I'm getting put. Changing oh. tactics? Felix, I just broke your hook. He's gonna kill me. I broke his hook again. Rip. I don't think you could really see suckers if you wanted. I mean, they're dead. I don't know what didn't plan on. We put 100 of them in here. They don't survive in the summer. So literally what we don't eat now, if it makes it through, you know, to June, July, they're gonna die off anyways, which is just a waste of money and delicious food. So basically everything we catch, we're, we're keeping. Pink one and the yellow one was out. Pink one got hit and so I stopped the boat and I was reeling in the fish and it was about a five pound northern. So I netted it and then I noticed my line on the other one. You know, I stopped the boat. I saw oh, it snagged because it was bent in half, but the snag was way over that way. So I reeled in, it was 10 pounder. 10 pound northern? Yeah, so I had to net both of them at the same time. What's the strat there? Do you see this? It's just a piece of metal bent in half. The thing is, that trouble. sucker's probably caught more fish than I I've caught in my life. <laughs> All right, Jake's up. He's ready to catch a, his PB. Everyone's got to break their PB now. Everyone's used to catching the, what do you think, those are 10 inches that they stock? Yeah, like 8, 10. 8, they're 10 like, inches? They're, like <laughs> <laughs> they're over here just catching, like, trophy-sized trout, but lines are in, baby. Let's see who catches the next fish. Oh! 
Oh, it broke. No. I think it broke, didn't it? It, or, it felt like it just Oh, broke. that was my knot. I'm sorry. All right, we'll get this tied up, maybe. Sheesh. Yeah, we're just gonna see what happens. I mean, we might, might have to loosen the drag of hair. Okay, we're we're still getting some action. This is good. Uh oh, we got a bite. Let's see it. Let's see it. I'm waiting. Had a bite. I saw it. It went bobber went down. Is that the little wax worms? Yeah, maybe it's little bluegills messing with it. All right, keep an eye. It's like I'm like everybody's getting bites right now. I gotta see who can catch the next fish. You got a bite or what? Yeah. Really? I did. Oh yeah, he's got her. I did eat. Oh, he's on! He's on! Go oh god, we gotta log. go over here. Oh god, get away from the log. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Let's go. PV trout coming in hot. Let's see it, buddy. Should be like a bluegill. Let's oh, see yeah. it. Oh, he's big. He's big. big. Yeah, he's big. That he's big. big. He's not small. I promise. He's he's a big boy. It's easy. There's some slick poop right there. Oh my gosh, he's a giant. Oh my giant. Goodness. You got a legit giant trout oh on. <laughs> Dude, I feel like li we're in like Colorado or something. This is just nuts. Look that how big that guy is. Silly. Sheesh. Oh, we might be able to let this guy go. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it here. I got pliers. Dude, he's cold. He, I bet they're down on the bottom. There you go. There it is. Okay. He ain't bleeding. No, he's good. That's when we can pry a release. Yeah. All right, we can let him go. He's chilling. I'd rather catch him during ice fishing, especially since we don't need especially the meat right now. Especially this big boy. Look at that. Yeah, I had one on that spoon. Sheesh, <laughs> buddy. Congrats, PB. dude. Old PB. What do you got? What? Oh, oh, oh geez. We got another. In the pat chair. <laughs> in the old pat paw seat. What's going on here? What, were you using the spoon? No. Nope. Oh, the turd? Yep. No oh way you God. caught a trout on the turd. On the turd. I'll, on the turd. I'll grab it. Are you kidding me? The turd catches everything. Oh, that's another oh, big one. We might be able to release him, too. That's a big oh, yeah, fish. Sheesh. Look how pretty. Dude. <laughs> yeah, there's probably not too many ponds in the Midwest you can do this, huh, Felix? Nope. <laughs> no nope. rat rattling net. That's it right there. <laughs> That's it right that there. That's a tank. Look at that. Sheesh. I'm getting way ahead of you, the, buddy. The turd. Right oh, in the top of the mouth. There too. you go. I'm going to let this dude go too. It's got a little blue in it. There he goes. That's a big fish, that dude. Big. That is such ones, a big like, fish. Back. The big ones must be on the bottom because you're fishing right on the bottom yeah, for sure. Dude, they're cold too. Yeah, they must be. Down. They got to be down there. The water hasn't gotten probably cold enough for them to come up to the surface because it's still so warm out here. Oh, well, Felix caught one on the old turd. Jake just got his PB, and now it's up to Grant to catch your first ever trout. Yeah. All right, all right. First bite, first bite. Feel him, then you set the hook. Once it gets tight. Oh, strike one. Well, let's see if you still let's see if you still got the salmon eggs. I would bring yeah, bring it in. See if he robbed you. Oh wait, hang on! You got one! Hey, oh, you got one! He's, he's going to hit you! Oh, oh, oh! It's huge. okay. Yeah, there you go. Go, go that way. There you go. There you go. Yep, yep, yep. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, let's go. Grab it, Jake. Let's go. Oh my gosh, it's a tank! Oh my gosh, it's a tank! Oh my oh gosh, my dude, that's a giant dude, trout. Dragon, oh, 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 oh my so god. Right. That's, that's a tank, a dude. Tank. How is he, how is he eating it? Is it possible oh, he to- swallowed it. Oh, is dude, it, it gone? Like he's been spawning. What's the oh, deal with the tail there? Whoa, is it, is it gone for good? Is that gonna it's be down, Is that dude. gonna be the fourth? Oh, let me see them players. Yeah, you got we it. might be able to get it. Yeah, that'll be the fourth <laughs> one for the fish fry. He's out. Hey, we're gonna do the old one. Yeah, he ain't gonna make it, that's for darn. I mean, like even these guys are already KO'd. said before we weren't gonna release them, but then we caught two keggers right on the outside of the lift where like, I'd rather catch them during ice fishing season. Not that there's not gonna be plenty of other ones, but you never know. Maybe some of these died. Maybe half of them died when we put them in here. No one knows. I, know, I mean, we put in a hundred. Doesn't mean there is a hundred. So if we can release them, we're gonna release them. But during ice fishing season, we will clean them out. But for now, we'll kind of put back, especially these little bit bigger ones. There you go. We got our, that's plenty of food. We got four of them. By the way, look at these guys. Our friends are still here, except two of them are gone. We only got three left. But look at these guys. They just hang out. They're literally like our pets. You guys remember we bought these things and they were bullying one of them. They're bullying my buddy Greg. So we kept Greg and kicked the rest of them down the pond. There was five of them. Within a month or so. There was four of them. Now it's been like six months and there's only three of them. I don't know if they just keep getting KO'd or what, but they're actually nice. Remember they used to hiss at us and stuff, but they're actually chill. The only bad thing is they poop everywhere, but yeah, they just, they literally just eat grass. Like I don't have to feed them or nothing anymore. They eat grass, they do their thing. Once it gets frozen, they might die. I don't know what they're gonna do, but so far, I mean, three of them have kind of stuck around for a little while, but anyways, wanna show you guys that. So we're gonna hang out for a little bit, maybe catch a couple more, but we definitely got enough to eat. I say the plan is to make some, I wouldn't call it chips and dip, crackers and dip. I think that's something unique and it also is not gonna just taste like trout so we might have to go to the store and get all the ingredients for that and get all that done up and whatnot but hope you guys are enjoying the trout videos because like i said there's gonna be plenty more of them but let me know what you guys how you guys like to cook them and prepare them and all the good stuff like that but anyways let's see if we can get a few more stay tuned what, what exactly is going on there with the flag it just tells you when you get a bite when that fish pulls that this will trip open water tip up is that basically what that is yeah it's just you can do that any i've seen guys use like the little bells for like yeah i never i never oh, seen this, that this, of course i got it upside down oh okay but it doesn't matter 
See what and happens. then you're and then it, it trips. Then you know you had a bite. I've seen the bells. I ain't never seen that fly go up. It's like literally a tip up for, for open water. Look at these guys. Those not look like snow geese. Shoo! All right, we made it back. Felix is gonna teach us the ways of cleaning trout. I did, I showed you guys one way, but it all works, but sounds like your way might be more efficient than my way. So this is the this is the Felix way of cleaning trout. Like so what, what do we have? the animal fan. Okay. Put your knife in there. Yeah. Go right up the middle. Try yeah. not to cut the guts. Then you take the back of the head. Yep. And you go, and go all the way around. And then you just reach under here, and you hold them here, and you just pull. Clean that was fast. Okay, okay. That was fast. That was fast. That was fast. That's how you clean trout. If you're a trout fish, that'll blew my mind. If you're watching this on YouTube, you do not just see what happened, but Craig literally cleaned a trout in less than 20 seconds. My mind is absolutely blown. Well, he's going in, he's going to finish cleaning those suckers up, and we are going to get to cook it. I think we're going to attempt to do some type of salmon dip on a cracker, but with trout, so stay tuned. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a couple of days. We are ready to make some fish dip. Isn't that right, puppies? We are, yep. No, don't. Please don't lick the pan. No, go lay down. Okay, well, we are going to be using some ducks buffalo seasoning, some buffalo spicy fish dip. But fish got cleaned up. If you guys were watching this on Uncut, you saw Felix and Craig absolutely go off. They cleaned these in 20 seconds. It was incredible. But now they've been sitting. They kind of look like, well, they look like they're dead. By the time we can go get ingredients and whatnot. So that's essentially what we're after. One of them looking guys. So one fish there. Let's see what this guy's here. These are some good, these are megas. Oh, they're dripping everywhere. I don't know if we're gonna be able to fit them on this little pan, to be honest. We might have to just throw one up on the grill. We are gonna try smoking it. So smoke trout fish dip is essentially what we're gonna be cooking. And Jake, Jake's gonna be here in a minute. And he's gonna kind of help me prepare all this. Ooh, I, we might be able to get it. We may just have to run them all, run them all the same way. These are big daddies, son. So I'm thinking keep the seasoning simple. Buffalo, like I said. Oh yeah, look at that, full pan worth. And then, we got some butter. So what we're gonna do is take that seasoning and open it up and just throw some inside. Just like that. Rub it on in there. Just like that. So open her up, dump that seasoning in. Yeah, it's definitely got a little, little bit moist in the garage where I store it. There you got it. No, you, yeah, you can do it, I promise. This probably isn't the strat, but we're just gonna have to give her hell like this. Okay, yep. Good enough. All right, well, we're gonna season them up just like that, and then we got some butter that we are going to cut and place on the trout. So take, your, take just like a little, slice it like that, open up your trout belly, slide it on in there. I'll probably throw like two, two of these per trout, and then like I said, we're gonna put them on the pellet grill and smoke them. Now, I don't know, this thing's smoking really high right now. I'm looking at it's 275. Uh, it should be, and it's set at 180, so someone broke my pellet grill. Uh, but we're just gonna go ahead and throw them in like that. So that's essentially what you're looking at. Stuffed with butter and buffalo. Boom, we're gonna do the rest of these guys, put them on the grill for maybe an hour or two, and then we'll kind of debone all the meat, and then we got a bunch of other uh, ingredients as well that we're gonna make some, hopefully some spicy buffalo trout, smoked trout fish dip. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! Grill is getting it now, baby. That is gonna make a lot of dip. See you guys in a couple hours. Big old trout. Looking good, all buttered up. Greasy. Look at those greasy boys. Sheesh. Dude, they, we, we did a little taste test right there. It's pretty, oh wow, this thing's burning my, this thing's burning through my mitt. All right, well, let's take the sucker to the garage. Shoo! All right, well, um, looks like, uh, I don't even know. Kind of gross, TBH. But I feel like, I mean, I took a little bite of it and I thought that was pretty darn good. So once you have it smoked, you should just be able to take that skin and peel it right off, which is why you cook it first. Because otherwise, like, you can't, like, skin these fish like you can. Like so a, didn't you try to... I tried it filleting them and I don't really do much. But look at that. I mean, this is like, you just fork it right off. This is why you smoke it, because it makes it real easy to skin. Take your meat. They don't get those pin bones mm. either. You just take it right off the ribs. Dude, it tastes like... Dude, that tastes like salmon to me. That's pretty close to salmon. It tastes a lot like, like grocery store salmon. Very close yeah. to salmon. Yeah. Wow. That was... See, when we did trout the last time, I think I just pantered and it was not... It was like mm -hmm. kind of fishy. That tastes about as close to salmon as you can get without actually being salmon. That's really good. All right, well... Before, that's it, thanks for, I'm just kidding. Uh, but if you guys are gonna do the dip, 
just do what we just did, which is we did. In, I'm not even tasting the buffalo TBH. No, like, it's like you could definitely the, put a little bit more because the because see, we peel the skin off. Well, see, the buffalo's on the inside, mm-hmm. which is fine because it's going to get in there. But like very little seasoning, but just the fact that we smoked it. I would say if you're just looking to eat trout whole like this, like just fork and all, this is probably the way to do it. I can taste the smoke. It's yeah. Good. Oh, the smoke is there. The smoke is there. All right. So I'll probably grab a fork that I hadn't sucked on. So we're going to make two versions since we're, we're here. We, we, you know, since we've added some buffalo, there's going to be a little bit of buffalo, but not a lot, but we did find some hot sauce. So I think what we could do is split the ingredients in half, make a little bit. That's just basically what you are, your recipe, which yeah. is simple. It's, it's onion powder, garlic powder, uh, chives, dill, salt, pepper, lemon juice, and cream cheese, and then we got green onions instead of chives, which you can add a little bit in that, that don't works. matter. So that's like a very like plain, just simple as it gets. Basically. But we can beefcake version it and spice up a little bit with some hot sauce and more ducks buffalo, make a, make like a buffalo fish sauce, essentially. So, all right, what are we starting with? You need to cut that sucker up? Let's uh, let's just split like this in half. Okay. We'll do, oh gosh. Uh, knife's just that would have been, that would have been bad. How much mayo? Mm. Are we measuring or are we just- I don't measure. Are you winging? I don't well, you, you you take it over then, chef. You, you wanna do this? Yeah, I can I can handle this. So, you're just winging is what you're telling me. Yep. How often do you make this? What fish do you normally use, salmon? Just do it whenever we have leftover salmon, yeah. Really? Like smoked salmon, don't eat the whole thing. Just use, do it with the leftover. Okay, so I can do that. Yep, that's what you're telling you me. got half. And then I can eyeball it. I bet you got a quarter, maybe a quarter cup. cup. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was trying, that's what I was going for. Okay, that's probably about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. Okay, I'll just copy you. This is gonna be, it's like, it's like a 1v1. <laughs> yeah, 1v1, but we're gonna make the same thing. Okay, so you're just planning on yeah. mixing it. Mm-hmm. You want you want us mixing? Mm. Or are you good with what you got? We'll see the green cheese, it. I let sit out, so I was hoping yeah, it would. it's softened. It'll be okay. How's the whisk doing? Uh, it's eating, you know, it's thing? eating it at this point. Oh, no, it's just inside. Yeah, just, yeah, I didn't really do a whole lot, to be honest. Yeah, I think you might have. God, it's definitely soft every not softened. As I know much I had the cream cheese sit out for like two hours. I thought that would have been enough. We can heat probably it could hit it in the microwave. For hey, like there's a microwave. There's a microwave right behind you. Let me see if that helps. That'll work. So cream cheese, and then do we need to slice some green onions? What? Ooh, that smells pretty good. Yeah. yeah, I thought green onions and chives were the same thing, but so you just do one of these guys, right? Yep. You liking that? Oh God, thirty seconds is probably. Probably a little over. I would say that's when. We, that I don't think it did much, but we'll see. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Now I'll we're gonna have hot dip. That's fine. But it is working here. So you got yours mixed. I'm gonna get. I, if I drop one more thing, this is just getting out of hand. Start putting seasonings. Okay. Yours looks smoother than mine. What happened here? Yours is chunky. You might need a little bit more mayo, but I don't know. I'd be careful with it. Don't want to do too much because we can't add more cream cheese because we're out. What happened there? Yours is in a metal bowl. Mine was in a plastic bowl. Maybe yours didn't heat up as fast. Or really? Something. Can I sweep half of this in mine? Go for it. Okay. Bang. You're just doing one of these, right? Like, just winging it. Just giving her one of those. As much as you want. Garlic powder. Okay. Just a little bit of that in there. Okay. Onion powder. Okay, and then dill weed. What's dill weed taste like? Dill? It's like dill pickle. I really yeah. get that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it does smell like pickles. Yeah. I'm guessing a little goes a long way, so we're just gonna do them numbers. A little lemon juice. A little, little chives too. Yeah, throw some chives in there. Just a couple. I'm just gonna start mixing now. Mix it up. A little cream cheesy. I have too much mayo in mine. Rip. I'm telling you, we might need to combine forces. Yeah, we, I think we should. Should we add? Should we just combine? Why don't you Let taste mine your, first? I was gonna say. Mine just tastes like mine's lightly seasoned cream cheese. I feel like I need to add more stuff. Is that yours is better? Because is it better? Mine has too much mayo. This one mine's so runny. The buffalo. Once we add the buffalo, I feel like that's gonna change. That'll change the game. Help. All right. So take your fish. Make sure you don't get any bones. So you just kind of pull it like this. Now you can see the rib cage, like that, and just chuck it in there. Just like that. How much fish do you like in there? Just keep going. Yeah, just keep going. I'm gonna say we're good. it's gonna make a lot of dip. I'll tell you that yeah. much. It is coming off though very nicely. I will say, making it just making it easy. The smoke did it good. Which I didn't really smoke it to TBH. All I lied. I did like 30 <laughs> minutes of smoke and then like baked 10 it. minutes at 375 and baked it. Smoke was just taking way too long. We ain't got time for that. All right, how are we doing? More or less? More? I think we should give it a taste. Really? Them crackers. So we have. Everything seasoned crackers or just straight up like chips. Tostitos. <laughs> I'd go with the crackers. Do you like crackers? Yeah. Okay, everything everything crackers. Here we go, boys. Trout dip. 
Mmm. Good? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's good. You're right, it's a little warm, which is odd, but put in the fridge for a couple hours. Oh yeah. I feel like that's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. And we it honestly so much better after it was in like the fridge, the fridge for a while. Yeah, let's make it cold. We used a lot of fish. Surprisingly, I thought it was going to be like it a, could use more fish too. Like so, I would say pretty much one large trout for one big bowl like this. Just depends on how much fish you want. Mm. That's good. Yeah, it is good. I like yeah. that. All right, here's what we'll do. Both we'll take some out so we can actually compare the two. So go ahead and spoon, spoon one in one of those guys, and then we'll turn the rest into buffalo. We'll see how that goes. We're gonna beefcake this sucker up and get her all spicy. How much do you think? Just give it a little dash and I'll stir it in. We'll see what it looks like. Right. Think about it like that. Spice it up a little bit. Take oh some, yeah. Take some ducks in there. That's it. That might be the deal. Might be. A little spicy. I always thought like smoked paprika too mm -hmm. would be like a good version of it, like a smoky, a smoky fish. Mm -hmm. See now, see, I'm, I'm thinking we got something there. We definitely got something. All right. You feeling it? Yes. Yeah, All right. Let's see what we think of the buffalo version. Mmm, dude, that's good. Yeah. It reminds me of buffalo chicken dip, but it's fish and cold. Mm -hmm. Like it tastes like a lot like buffalo chicken. That's dip. so good. That is good. That's way better. I think that's good. That's way better. That's that is the deal there, buddy. Just yeah, we gotta cool it down. Yeah. And it'd be so so good. Mmm, the buffalo. You could take that to your Christmas party. Yes, please. take that to your holiday fiesta bash, mm -hmm. whatever you got. You bring your own dish. Just don't, just don't show them this, because I feel like most people probably wouldn't be a fan of that. But the buffalo, definitely the, the strap there. And we probably could have covered the meat more in it and really mix it in there and did all that. But you saw how simple it was. Trout dip, you can do it with salmon, which is what, yeah. what your original recipe came with. Give it a shot if you guys go out there and catch some trout. But comment your favorite trout recipes in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll catch you next one. And peace.